welcome to the Grozio Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. First, I'd like everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have the agenda before you, and I'd like to know if there's any additions or deletions to the agenda. Motion to approve. I'm sorry? The minute from the half month is March. You put in March in the paper. Yeah, I'll make that correction. Thank you. Do we have support? Support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Right there, Bob. Great. Aye. So um, we do have the approval of uh, meeting minutes next. Um, does anyone have any comments on the meeting minutes that were sent out via email? And hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve is, is written. Support? I support. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Motion passes. Um, next, we have open public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a public comment? You know that Roger's son was over here and he talked about something about bike helmets. I'm not sure if he's coming back in or not, but we'll move on. He's passed. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll close public comment and move into old businesses. First, we'd like to get an update about the fountain. So uh, first on the agenda, I guess we can talk a little bit more about the, the website and brick sales. Uh, so far, we have just a handful of bricks that have been ordered. Um, I was just talking to Wally. I will make sure that those are shipped in time for Island Fest so those can be on display. Uh, we might have to pay a small shipping fee for them unless we have five of a kind of a certain type of brick, so five of four by eights or five of eight by eights. Okay. Um, but I will do that. I, um, I also, I know that there was some sort of advertisement posted on GITV. I'm not sure who posted it. I think they were... Um, you know, they, they meant well, but I, I'm told that you can't really see it. So I'm working on that. I should have that finished by tonight. I can uh, work on it this weekend. I've been planning on making a video for that. But oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to make it, show it to you, approve, and then I'll go give it to Ted. Okay. Can I, can I interject, folks? Some of you are not being heard. you got to get up really close to these bikes. Great. Thank you. Um, anyone in the audience that's interested in purchasing a brick as part of the fundraiser for um, installing the fountain, which will be done at um, you know, Grow Road, uh, right across from the uh, Township Hall. We do have a website where you can get a little bit more information. So what I like is to bring up the TV screen so that way we can see uh, the, the Grozeal website. Assuming that that's on, I'll say that you go to grozeal.com and if you go over to I lost my connection over here, but uh, essentially, if you go to the um, the commission's page, you can go over the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission, and then from there, there is a link called Fountain Web Page. If you link directly on that, it goes to a website called PolarEngraving.com slash Grozeal. And Aaron put this together, it was a great job. Um, you know, it gives a little background on what we're trying to do, as well as near the bottom, you can start to do the online purchasing. So you can fill out your name, um, pertinent information, select the size of the brick that you'd like, hit continue, and then you can actually enter all the information that you need uh, that you'd like to see on that brick. Is, am I leaving anything out there? Um, the, the checks will have to be mailed or brought to the township building. Nope. The che <laughs> Let me repeat that. The checks will have to be mailed to Ann Darzniak or brought by the township building for payment. Um, we cannot accept credit card payment. We will also be having a booth at the Island Fest where you could bring cash or check. Um, either of those would be okay. And I, I assume everybody knows what this is for. Do we need to give background about the fountain and where it's going to be? I think we've, we've gone over that enough. Yeah. So, um, no, I think that's it. I have a question. 
when people donate for book, is that considered a donation exempt? Like you know what I'm talking about? Tax Can deductible? You claim it? It, yeah, tax deductible, is it? Um, I am not sure on that. We can. In case people are listed, wondering Mr. about Chairman, that. Is listed, Mr. Chairman, as a deduction or a donation? I'm sorry. Uh, but you best to talk to your tax advisor. I think it is, but that's not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. We should ask Ann to. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. There's probably some amount you got to deduct for the actual cost of the brick. There's like, there's a donation part, and then there's the cost of the actual item that has to be taken out usually. Mm -hmm. It's a little more complicated than that, so Ann would be the person okay. to talk to. I have a, que a question. One thing about it is, is that GITV, I know that it probably doesn't have that many viewers of the reel anymore like it used to in the past. Has anyone approached like Brian Loftus to like put it up on his Facebook page? Because a lot of people look at his Facebook page for like bridge closings and freighter passages, and they would probably see more of it than just on GITV. Sort of my suggestion. I think that's a great suggestion. Everybody's watching for news from him, like so. <laughs> yeah, on that front, we can also like send it out to uh, Opportunity Grozio and other civic yeah, booster organizations. Yeah. Um, if we haven't filled anything out in the, the paper, I think it'd be great to you know, get a little piece in there before Island Fest and tell them to come visit us. Um, maybe we can uh, correspond a little bit via email or after this meeting to talk a little bit more of those details. Um, Rob, do you have anything that you'd like to add as far as the website or the, the, the brick fundraiser itself? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that we we're all prepared for that because I think our, our golden opportunity for this is going to be at Island Fest to have the display out there setting and then um, being able to uh, solicit or and or market the, the opportunity for people to donate and purchase bricks. Great. Um, Via uh, correspondence with um, Lorinda DPS, uh, she had made mention that we should probably meet with Sahail to you know, talk about the, the specific details you know, uh, about the installation. And you know, I've been out, so I don't know if we um, made any um, traction on that at the last meeting. Wally? I've talked to both Lorinda and with the representatives from the township about placement. And uh, when we got the when we've got the fountain in hand, they're going to want to look at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no need for a formal meeting. It should go in pretty simply. Okay. Yeah. And to let everyone know, um, I've been corresponding with uh, Dale Room, and he just recently got an email that our fountain did ship, so it should be here within the next week or so. Okay. So we were hoping to have that here for Island Fest, which would be a week and a half from now. How are we going to coordinate the deliver of that to the Island Festival location of our booth? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move that round. Okay. I'm going to pick it up and I'm trying to put it on display in a pallet um, so we can display it and uh, talk about it while we sell bricks. Okay. So, again, maybe after the, uh, the formal meeting, we can get into the, the, the dirty details on you know, what we specifically want to see for that uh, display. All right. It, uh, it weighs about 160 pounds, and if anyone was, is just dying to see what one looks like, there's an identical twin to it in front of the Detroit Public Library on the Woodward and Kirby corner. The only hmm. difference is the color. It's the same fountain, and it's built like a tank. Mm -hmm. Great. Is there any other questions or you know, comments about uh, you know, the fountain update website, any future meetings, or specifically about the Island Fest booth and outreach? Well, not really related, but the same topic about fountain. Um, is it, I'm talking about the other fountain. Can we have a bowl with the shame for other fountain? I saw a guy holding a dog at the Geese Depot. And another guy said, there's nothing for the dog at the shush. Can we arrange to get a bowl with a chain for the other fountain? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can look into you know, retrofitting. I, I don't know if that is doable or not, but I don't think it hurts to, to ask. Yeah, that might be good. Okay. Moving on to the horse mill path and uh, maintenance projects. Wally, I know you've been heading that up. Is there any uh, 
I spent, on it. I spent a considerable amount of time on this. Uh, did walk the entire path with Dale and representatives from the Rains Company, uh, Mr. Bill Bettendorf. Uh, received in the mail, and I just received it today, uh, their punch list of things that need to be done, and it rather agrees with what we thought it needed to be done. Uh, there's, there has been some reach to the contractor that put the path in, Campo, and uh, he's asked for a face-to-face -face meeting, so I'll have that with him. I don't have a date for it yet. Okay. Can I ask that you uh, send that punch list out to us in a PDF or um, email so that we have a copy of that as well? Would you like to read it? I would like to have a copy of it. Uh, as far as other path maintenance projects, uh, I also took a good walk along the school path, the one from the middle school to the high school, mm -hmm. and uh, got an eyeball estimate on it. It's in bad shape, and that is estimated to be about a $20,000 repair. Uh, it is falling apart. It uh, has some areas around sewers and some good sized cracks and missing pieces around the ball fields especially. So um, that's a subject for, for further development. We're gonna, we're gonna spend some time when we talk with uh, our township representatives and, and uh, Reigns to see if we can tighten that estimate up. Mm -hmm. that's, that's on the school property? That that path that path goes from the middle school to the yeah yeah and i believe that path is outside of our scope of responsibility well that's your opinion sir mm -hmm. you're entitled to it the uh, and that's something that we should definitely be addressing because while we definitely would say that any comment that has anything to do with bicycle and pedestrian travel you know we want people to feel free to come to us and you know, so that way we can figure out: is it something that specifically, you know, that we can do, you know, do something about, or do we need to coordinate with other folks in different departments, uh, you know, the, the school district, or you know, or volunteers, or something else, as far as reaching some sort of solution? Um, I do understand, Rob, where you're coming from. That that is school property. So it'd be interesting to know the historical context. Was that put in with school money? Was that put in you know, with township money? It was put in with community block grant funds. Mm -hmm. It needs to be scoped out. We're mm -hmm. not gonna just say we're not gonna do that because it belongs to the schools. And it I, needs to be developed further. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with you on that as well, Wally. I see both of your sides, and I think that you know, both things need to be done. We need to be you know, cognizant of what's in our scope, our responsibilities, but also understand that sometimes, you know, uh, that it might be outside, but at the same time, we've got to make sure that we're doing due diligence and not just saying no to things right away either. So thank you both. The, uh, can I add something about uh, other maintenance issues that someone contacted me about um, with respect to the path along West Shore Country Club? There's some long longitudinal cracks that are about the width of a bicycle tire that someone sent me some pictures of that would probably be a safety hazard that probably needs to get someone to look at. Mm -hmm. But it's basically from Ferry to Jewel Colony in that stretch. There's quite a few of them. And I rode and I confirmed that they were there and you just kind of, like if you ride down a more narrow bike tire, like a, like a, like a road bike tire, I think you might be, have some issues. Mm -hmm. Do you think that might have been something that, you know, Wally has talked in the past that we do the crack ceiling. Yeah. Um, we keep it a little bit lower than the actual grades. So that way it's not pulled up by the snow plow. Maybe it was just a little bit too far low, and so it, it's presenting a potential hazard now. It looked like it was crack sealed before, and it's, like, dropped with the, with the shrinking and heat and cold expansions. It probably something needs to get... I think crack ceiling will fix it. It's just a question someone needs to get there okay. to do it. Let's go look at it, Roger. I'll go with you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, is there I have a little bit more. Sure. The area around the gas station was a part of the meridian path that was not fixed last year. And an estimate was given to Dale verbally. Uh, he doesn't agree with that estimate. Uh, thinks it's much too high. <coughs> and so I'm not going to share that dollar amount with you. We're going to have, again, a face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, as you remember, 
Pastor Sean from the Lutheran Church came to us and asked about uh, if we could figure out a way to put a path in there and what it might cost from the path, bike path to the uh, parking lot. And it looks like that would probably be in the neighborhood of about $12,000 to construct. I've not conveyed that to him yet. I will mm -hmm. do that in writing. Is that an eight-foot path? Is that the sidewalk? Six-foot path. Six-foot path. That was estimated when the rest of the work on the horse mill mm -hmm. path was. Now, the horse mill details. Now, there are some dead trees and brush that were pushed into existing trees as that path was built. And in fairness, Campo Brothers did remove a lot of it, but mm -hmm. not all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of places that still need to be touched. Uh, the bird bass, there are some good sized ones. And uh, there was an intent made to make them drain by gouging out the surface of the bike path, and that's not going to cut it either. Mm -hmm. uh, we've asked for the proper fill or re repair, which is to uh, mill it down an inch and then install new asphalt to a proper grade there. There is longitudinal cracking in the path. Pretty much between the thoroughfare canal and Park Lane, it seems to be the, the majority of the, the work needed there. Uh, if you walk down the path, you will see on the edges of the path to within about six foot, six inches of the edge. I thought that. Well, you will see some cracking there. Mm -hmm. That's rollover, and that's a natural part. That won't be fixed. But the areas that are in the direct path of the bike path will be addressed. Uh, there are some spots that have some grading that needs to be corrected, uh, some proper improper drainage. Uh, during the week last week, we had about four inches of rain, and at one time, part of the new bike path was underwater, as was the road. But that receded rather quickly as it goes down there, quickly as like in the next day, and uh, not so bad anymore. Mm -hmm. okay, and, then, and then finally, uh, if you go around the bird sanctuary, or bird sanctuary, the nature trail that leads to the, the you know the sanctuary, there is a there are two large dead oak trees that are standing, and one of them is soft enough to push your hand through. So we're going to have those cut down and removed. And there is some dead lumber right at that entrance way. There's like an island between horse mill and uh, and the path. And the larger logs will be picked up from there, too. Great. And this is all covered under the existing uh, contract that we had. There's no new... Um, there might be some open space work there. Mm. But there's nothing coming out of that, that's it. specifically no, from the, the bike, bike no, path that's maintenance. That's not bike path maintenance. Okay. Okay. Um, can I mention about the sign on the horse? The signs are going to remain. They were put in. Well, there's a couple that I kind of noticed. One, and the bike path, and about three or four times. Stop. Yeah. Do I keep going? Mm -hmm. Keep just the last one by Park Lane. B believe it or not, those were specified. I don't know. If they were specified, they are incredibly confusing. Incredibly, the path I don't argue that yeah. they're confusing. Uh, that when we put the path in, part of Wayne County's permit process required them. Because it's like there's five bike paths there. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I'd like to know specifically who, who authorized them and how we contact them to, to negotiate that or if there is an opportunity to negotiate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, you know, it was a part of the pre-negotiation before we put the path in. Okay. Again, so do we have a name that we can contact and talk to them about? I don't have a name for you. Okay. So, so who would we contact? They were in. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Thank you, sir. And one more. Um, the bridge, the two signs. Uh, please walk back two of them. Does it necessarily have two? Maybe we should have one? That's That was all in the spec for signage. Again. Mm -hmm. That one I can sort of see because it is pretty narrow there and there are a lot of pedestrians, but it's the start end ones that really, the end ones that are the ones. Mm -hmm. Some of this stuff just doesn't seem to make sense. Yeah. But it is what it is. We got walking bike, bike mm -hmm. one, I think. And you know, okay. the attrition's going to take its take its course down there. There's yeah. going to be somebody run off a road with a truck and take one out. <laughs> well, that's yeah. 
but I don't think we'll all be running down to replace them. I, I think it would be good for us to itemize you know, all the ones that we do have concerns about and you know, be able to, uh, I guess, pick our battles wisely, see which ones do we specifically have you know, problems that might be a safety concern or it's you know, misinformation versus which ones might be just a little bit of over-signage. And that way, maybe we can you know, approach Mr. Raum or uh, our engineering consultant and find out, you know, certain ones are within Wayne County right, uh, within the Wayne County right away of the intersections. And I know Wayne County will be concerned about those. We might have less um, you know, flexibility in negotiating with those ones. But certain ones that are outside of intersections and outside of that right away, maybe there is something we can do about. I think we you know, owe it to at least investigate it. There were a couple that were actually incorrect, too. I think one of the curves was yeah. completely incorrect. So. And I know I did start mm -hmm. itemizing that and like sent out a list to you guys, put some pictures up on our um, on my um, I forget the name of it, uh, but basically online, so that way we can view the pictures together. In, in fairness, I did not see that one. Okay. I went, and I went looking for it, never saw it. So. Well, I will. I will definitely resend it out to everyone, and that way we can. No, I'm talking about the, the uh, alleged incorrect sign. Oh, okay. Again, the, the, all of the signage on it was part of the pre-construction package that was put together, and that was before I was on this mission. Mm -hmm. This was all planned Correct. Well, over two years ago, so mm -hmm. you have to go through your package and see what the signage was in, that, in those lists. And I don't have that package. I could get one, mm -hmm. but I don't have one. Yeah, and in all fairness, like you said, you were not part of this. Quite a few of uh, the other commissioners weren't. I think the only ones that were was Rob and myself. And there were some things at the time that you know, we did have problems with that you know, basically they said they were non-starters that we weren't negotiating. That would be an example of the, the walk your bike signs. Right. Those were the ones I was aware of that were, that were must-haves, mm -hmm. was the bridge sign. Yeah. So, you know, thank you for you know, keeping up diligence on that, Rob. Thank you. Wally for you know uh, bird dogging this thing, making sure that you know we get you know, a very good, great quality project. I hear nothing but you know good um, you know good comments about the path, and I, it's great. I'm very proud of this entire commission and everyone that's you know, worked on that project. Um, I do have one question related to the the power washing. Has it, has there been any action from this commission on that, or has the, there been any estimates? The, the power washing is in progress. Okay. The, they started at the south end of the island, the bridge, uh, uh, the power wash on uh, Grill Road to the west of this building has been done. The bridge in front of the elementary school has been power washed. I don't think that they have been sealed yet, Brian, because of weather, mm -hmm. but uh, they are being cleaned. Yeah. Remind me, what was the cost? Uh, the entire those? project was $2,800. Yeah. I was very surprised to see you know, how competitive that, uh, that, um, that estimate was. No comment. I mean, yeah, I think it was good. Um, I do have a comment on that. Sure. Um, we know that we're power washing and resealing, but I noticed there there are um, boards that need replaced on some of them due to decay and warpage and some other issues. Um, we are um, right now we are just power washing and sealing them. We have no plans at uh, replacement of any. Um, boards on it? No, right now the, the, the man that is assigned to do the work is only doing power washing. If, mm -hmm. I, if he sees something, uh, Alan, I'm sure he'd say something if it was, you know, in terribly mm -hmm. bad shape, but uh, he had, I haven't heard him saying anything, and if you know of some that are warped or, or broken or some, you know, there's some damage that warrants a replacement, then just give me a shot. We'll, we'll get it fixed. Okay, thank you. Okay. So any other questions or comments about the horse mill path or maintenance projects? Great. Alan, I think you got an update for us on our shirts. Well, we, um, we've been working on shirts and a logo. We put a contest out to the local children in our schools to uh, develop a logo for us. And um, we did pick a logo. It was... Um, uh, yes, if you want. Know. 
this logo was um, developed by Samantha, I'm sorry but I'm forgetting Samantha's last name. She's a ninth grader at the high school. She's not in the graphics class. She came up with this on her own at home and submitted it and we voted on it and chose this one as our, as our logo. Um, this is a sample logo that the shirt company is providing us to uh, basically develop it in any color we'd like. We're, we're going to talk about that later tonight, but basically this is our logo. We're going to be putting on shirts that we'll all wear during events to help uh, market our cause, so to speak. We, uh, we've chosen shirts and hopefully anybody that stops by our booth at the Island Fest will be able to see one of our shirts as we wear them. So we hope that you do stop by and see us. Um, we don't know that these will be available to the public in the near future, but we will, we will work on that also. So eventually you can, you can uh, purchase that one of these shirts. We just don't know what kind of time frame we're looking at yet. So I hope to have, uh, maybe by fall time, we can have shirts available to the public. Um, like I say, it's a working project. So as soon as we're done, we'll let you know on that. Um, just for clarification, yeah, I thought these shirts were specifically for uh, commissioners and did, like to separate us you know, from a, doing official business with a fundraiser. So um, if we are going to make ones for the public in, at large, you know, maybe we consider you know, having a little bit, at least an, a nuance change within the logo or you know, something mm -hmm. of that nature so that way there can be some differentiation? Well, that's why I say we're still working on this. We don't know how we're going to present it or, or what changes are going to be made. Mm -hmm. But um, even if it's just a ball cap or uh, you know, a t-shirt, our shirts will be uh, a athletic polo. So I'm sure it'll, they'll be different um, just because they'll probably be t-shirts given to the public. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll decide all that when we meet on this. Great. Do you have a, a cost estimate what the shirts would cost? Well, that's uh, that's part of our discussion. We uh, we will finalize our shirt discussion tonight, and then uh, we'll have a price after we decide on that. I think uh, our shirts will probably run up under thirty dollars, and if if they're open to the public, I don't know what they would be. The typical, you know, fifteen dollar T-shirt probably. But like we say, that all those funds probably will. Uh, just cover the cost. They won't be used as a fundraiser. So, mm -hmm. great. Um, well, thank you for maybe all your work. to top it off the commission from the public. We can put our name down or the year that we're involved with, 2012 to 2015. That's our three. Uh, that's one way to stand out from the public. Mm -hmm. Name. Good idea. Just an idea. You got ten days to get that all accomplished, guys. Just mm -hmm. remember that. I don't know the, how, how ambitious you can be in ten days. Very true. The last minute is the best motivator, Wally. <laughs> Give it to a busy man. Go get him, out. <laughs> no problem with that. Any other comments on uh, Alan's work with the shirts and logo? Thank you very much. You've done a tremendous job with them. We'll talk a little bit more about this. This is just a basic layout. We will discuss color and layout for this if we want to change it. The, uh, the uh, projection here doesn't really do this uh, logo justice. Uh, this is an embroidered um, logo that is on a, on a piece of paper that was emailed to me just before the meeting. So uh, we, we hope to have had it last week, but they had a family issue at the store and they left for the weekend. So we had to wait till this week to get all this. I'm confident we can get it done. Great yeah. work. They, they say there's about a three to four day turnaround, so we should be fine. Awesome. So next item on the agenda is about bike to school day. And I have to say, first of all, that, you know, I've been, you know, people are coming up to me, patting me on the back and saying about oh, what a great job it was. And the first thing I have to say is this is all you know, Aaron over here because she's been doing a tremendous job and I want to thank you first and foremost for putting this together. A you know, top-notch class project, great job. Can we get a round of applause from our commission? Well, I, I certainly wasn't alone. I had a lot of help um, 
Lori White was a tremendous help. Um, she's a parent who's very involved in the schools. Uh, the schools themselves, the principals, the parent volunteers, um, we had some really generous sponsors, um, PAT, PTO, uh, Al Petries, the, the bakery. Um, the police department was awesome. They sent people to areas where parents said that they were concerned about kids biking, made sure they were a presence. Um, everyone was out there. Um, so it certainly, it wasn't, it wasn't just me, but mostly to the parents and the kids who participated. I know you led a bike train, Brian, and there were uh, a couple of other parents, Aaron Shelton and Rebecca Kong led bike trains, and there were other parents also leading bike trains. Um, you could you could see them riding all over the island. So uh, without the participation, I think you know it, it wouldn't have mattered. So thank you everyone for biking to school, and um, we learned a lot. So hopefully it'll be even better next year, and we will have a walk to school day this fall in October. Aaron, for those that maybe mm -hmm. watched at home, mm -hmm. what was the uh, what was the number? Or well, the the first day, uh, the rainy day, probably about 100 students rode. And um, the second day, we're estimating between 350 and 400 because we collected slips on both days. So there might have been duplicates because if there were students who rode uh, the rainy day and then also the makeup day, they got to enter the drawings twice. Um, so that's that's in our estimation. Well, I think that's that speaks volumes when you talk about that many children riding to school and the size of the population of the school kids overall. That's quite a large percentage, so that's great. It was great to see everybody riding. The, the bike racks were overflowing. I don't know if anyone saw Meridian School that morning mm -hmm. in the middle school. They, they probably had the biggest participation. Um, so thanks Jane again. took some great Did you pictures. Kind of I went to take pictures. I think the next day I was biking only four bikes. I was hoping that they would continue every day to um, keep biking and get another month. I just want to say... A comment from the audience, too. Oh, sure. Yeah, we have a com comment from the audience. Well, it's, it's about Back to School Day, and um, this is the only down part, and it's really the only down part. Most of it was really great, so I have to really thank Erin and all the people who helped. And the thing I have to say is, we need kids to wear their helmets. And when I saw there were a lot of people not wearing their helmets the bike to school at the same time as me, and it was kind of weird, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I always wear my helmet, and apparently they say it's the cool thing. So for any kids watching, remember to wear your helmet. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for wearing your helmet. Uh, I can say, leading up our, our bike train, that there was a mixture of people wearing helmets or not. But what's very nice is one of our neighbor kids realized that other people were wearing helmets, and she s realized she forgot one. So she rode her bike home to grab a helmet because she didn't want to feel like she was left out and wasn't wearing her helmet that day. So if people like you keep up the pressure, keep wearing your helmet, like you said, it's going to be the cool thing, and that's what people are going to want to do. So thank you for all of your efforts. Um, and I think that as we move forward, we're going to have more educational opportunities, and hopefully we can see, you know, create a more safe environment. Thank you. Moving on to new business. Jane, I know that you just wanted to discuss the Idaho's uh, rolling stops. Is that something that you oh, still want to okay. talk about today? I did it really briefly. I have when I get on Facebook about biking, and this video is really interesting. You know how we always do bike, I always bike and stop. Bike and stop, not being a good girl. But I see bikers slowing down <laughs> and rolled out into custom. So I happen to see the video about Idaho thing. What it is, you bike, you pan, slow down, you keep a momentum, nobody keep going. Why stop? Get your power back on and then go, it takes up too much energy, so maybe we can change from stop to yield. That way I don't have to say where the caps. Mm -hmm. So maybe encourage the people to pan, look at everything while you're slowing down, but don't stop and waste energy. Mm -hmm. Not legal in Michigan, yeah, but this is something we can look into for Michigan. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's ways that we can you know, make sure that our rules and traffic laws, you know, 
better reflect what people are currently doing so we don't have uh, you know, uh, violators out there. Uh, I think that's a good thing, but I also recognize that we definitely have to make, sure, make safety first and make sure that there's not any confusion mm -hmm. within our traffic regulations. Um, you know, Alan, I know that you, you know, talked about that a little bit as well. Uh, as far as the stop signs, and I think we're kind of in agreement that rather than pursuing the Idaho uh, stop at a local level, making a confusing uh, you know, traffic regulation that only applies in Grozeal, not if you're in Trenton or you know, other parts of downriver of the state. Uh, instead, like Jane, you're also mentioning, potentially looking at the feasibility of changing some stop signs to yield signs, if it makes sense. I'm not sure what the rest of the, uh, the commission's opinion is on that, but it's something I would kind of like to look forward, uh, look at it in further detail as we're going through our non-motorized planning process. Um, I just came back from uh, the Zoo to Mac bike ride um, event, which is about 4,000 bikists up in uh, Petoskey area, and it goes from Petoskey to Mackinac City. Um, most of that ride is along the road, but uh, there, there was several of my friends that kind of uh, did their own ride to start with, and they started off in Petoskey, rode over to, to Glen Arbor, and then caught the uh, Zuda Mac path uh, up farther um, in the route. Along that area is a bike path that goes along the whole harbor there. It's about eight miles long. And um, I noticed that there were very few stop signs um, at all, even at the major intersections. They, they just expect bicyclists to understand that they need to be aware of their environment. Mm -hmm. And um, so maybe that's something we, we look at as a happy medium is maybe there's some areas that we don't need stop signs that we could remove those so that people would be more responsible for their own actions but yet um, wouldn't be expected by law if there's a mm -hmm. stop sign there to come to a complete stop. So it's a very good point, um, something that we've talked about before with uh, the Ashto Bike Book, you know, the American Association of State and Transportation, uh, you know, uh, Transportation and Highway Officials. Uh, they put out a book that's tested by all engineers across the, uh, the state, you know, as well as you know, the federal governments. So uh, they come together and they realize, you know, what's the most practical, what's the most uniform, you know, what's the safest, uh, you know, uh, practices out there. And there's specific you know, stipulations on when you should be putting in traffic control devices on shared use side paths. So I think you're right on the point that you know, we need to be looking at our paths and look at the feasibility of you know, should there be a stop sign, should there be a yield sign, or should there be nothing at all. And I think it's going to depend, again, on the specific intersection. Thank you. Alan, do you have anything up, uh, for us about complete streets policies tonight? Um, complete streets policy is going to be part of the PAC program this year. We're asking the township to to adopt it by resolution, and when they do that, um, we will add that to our PAC program and hopefully increase our our standing within the PAC evaluation and hopefully move up to a silver from a, uh, bronze to silver. And uh, there's a few other things going on. They're making some adjustments in our, our um, calculations. Uh, they, they considered the township uh, an 18 square mile township that included all our outer islands. So we're adjusting a lot of our, uh, our information on our pack. Um, it's, it's rather complicated, but part of our complete streets policy um, actually um, involves all of our open space and because we have uh, unattached islands it, we're, it's kind of a quagmire so we're trying to adjust that and um, make some some firm adjustments on how they see our community you know we're not a, a big urban sprawling community and I think they take that mindset with all their evaluations so what we're going to do is uh, uh, with, with our complete streets policy we uh, we have to to uh, try to make it fit within our community. So that's that's been kind of our uh, um, our problem with the complete streets policy. You know, it uh, it kind of conflicts with the kind of community we have. So we're trying to have them make a few adjustments on on uh, how they see our community and how PAC fits in it. 
uh, how it fits in pack with the complete streets policy, but as of this um, time, we're, we're really just trying to get the township to adopt it, and then we'll work that out with them. It's, it's, it's rather complex, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll happen fast, but how, how we're perceived under the complete streets policy is uh, very different than how Detroit or, <clears throat> excuse me, like Novi or you know, a bigger urban city mm -hmm. uh, fits within the uh, complete streets policy. So um, we're going to adopt it even though a lot of it won't apply to us. We hope to adopt it. So uh, just uh, <clears throat> to refresh my memory, are we going to have a couple of different examples of different complete streets ordinances for this commission to entertain and potentially recommend to the township board? Well, I, I, I didn't even want to take that further step. I would just like to present a, a one that's already... Um, been accepted. Um, we will look at that and put our, uh, put our information into it. And it's going to be adopted by resolution, not by ordinance, so it doesn't have to be that detailed. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a one-page resolution that we present to the township. We'll ask them to accept it. And uh, mm -hmm. but, but it will come here to this commission? Yes, it will. Great. It will be reviewed by us first. Um, once that's agreed upon, we will forward it to the township via Wally. And um, hopefully they'll adopt it, and we'll, uh, we'll do better on PAC this year because of it. Be, be advised that there is no meeting of the township board in the first meeting date of the month this year because it is Memorial Day. So our next meeting will be two weeks from Monday. And I don't know if you've got a, a policy ready or close to being ready or anything like that, but if you want to pass it by this, Commission, uh, it will it would not be able to be in time to you know to deal with it at a board level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to produce it tonight. Um, my file won't transition. I was at work trying to uh, to um, put it on paper for us tonight, but I couldn't um, translate the, the file that it was in. So mm -hmm. we'll get it right, and then we'll get it done. Yeah. And if you need help, please shoot an email out to us. I'm sure there's many individuals on here that can help you out with that. I, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item is something I wanted to talk about. And it was our non-motorized plan. Um, I've made mention of this in the past, but we haven't talked about it in much detail at this uh, at this actual meetings. And so it's kind of you know. Um, kind of just out there in the cloud, me, people might not be understanding specifically what we're looking to do. And we have public comments that you know, uh, people come and tell us about specific issues and we say, well, we're documenting those. But again, there's no actual evidence that we're documenting those, at least in the public's eyes. So what I'd like to do to, for you guys tonight is present you know, a potential idea for a map that could serve as you know, our general planning map for the community. And I'd like to get your comments on it and see if this is something that we want to pursue further uh, or you know, pursue a, dif a different route out there. So again, this is draft. It's just my ideas. I don't claim this to be the official you know, uh, non-motorized plan for our community. This is a, uh, a Google Maps document. So anyone that has access to Google and has a, a Gmail account can potentially create their own maps. What's nice about this is that it's all you know, online and that anybody that wants to view the actual map doesn't have to have any dedicated software. Uh, all they'll have to do is get a link from me. Um, right over here on the screen it says share. I can click that and provide a link. I can either give it to different individuals like on our commission and we could have uh, different privileges about actually editing the map, or I could just pass out the, the, the general link and people can view the document itself. I've called this you know, the Bicycle and Pedestrian uh, Travel Map, and it has various levels on there. So the first one I want to show you is uh, a very quick and dirty look at our existing facilities. So we have the Meridian Path, and um, you can click on this to actually get a more description of the different facilities out there, or you could zoom in and actually um, click on these. Okay. So there's a little dialog box that opens up, and you can put in any information that you think is relevant. So you know, just for the sake of you know, populating this map and show you guys the potential, I put in the meridian path and said, you know, this is the spine of our Grosse Bikeway system. 
Additionally, I have the horse mill path on here. And said, you know, it's our newest path. So I've color coded these so that way we have existing paths or on road facilities as well as, you know, trails. So I put the ferry trail in here. I know that this is not an official trail and not sanctioned by the township. Um, and so, at least in this version, I said it's an informal dirt path. It's nothing, you know, clarifying that, but it is something that people do use and might be, you know, part of a further analysis. So that's our first um, layer over there. And secondly, I've added in public comments. So in the past, we've had individuals talk to us about building you know, uh, fitness equipment along the horse mill path. Um, we said that you know we'll document that. It's not in our scope right now, but don't worry, we're not going to forget about it. When the time's right, you know we'll we'll entertain this motion more. Uh, we just had uh, the representative from the Lutheran Church talk about creating a formal trailhead um, at Church and Meridian, so I put that in there. Um, the, you know, this layer was specifically about comments from the public. So separating out, you know, what's existing. Uh, as well as what is officially part of our plan and just you know, letting people know that we hear your comments and we're using these comments in order to you know, facilitate our planning process. So there's quite a few more over here. I'm not going to go into any of the details. Uh, I can share this link with you guys later if you want to, you know, to look at it in more detail. Okay. The last item is what I'm, you know, for lack of a better word right now, I said desired corridors. And what I did was take ones we either know about, we've been hearing about via the, this commission, and we, there's sort of a general uh, agreement that's something that we might want to pursue further, or it was something that was part of the previous bike path committee that you know, preceded the, this actual commission. So you know, we've been hearing about you know, Grozio Parkway. So some people wanted to connect it up to uh, the Historical Society and as well as our you know, recent um, acquisition for our township park. Um, there is a Bellevue corridor. There's a church road gap, which um, the previous committee had looked at but realized that because of right-of-way issues, it would, the most logical connection is going to be sidewalks, and it's not going to happen until we actually do some road work repairs. So again, these aren't, I put these in there as placeholders so you can get the idea of what we might consider officially part of our plan, but I don't want to you know, fully sanction these and let you, give you guys a false impression that I'm doing the planning myself right now. Um, and since this is the free version of the software, there is limitations on how many different layers you could have. So coupled in this layer, um, I've included points that were, you know, areas of interest, things that um, we've known that we would like to connect up to. So the Water's Edge Marina, uh, you know, different schools, uh, Westcroft Gardens, or the Bird Sanctuary, which we connected via the, the horse mill path. Um, you know, anything that we thought, you know, we could, uh, is an area that we'd like to connect to, i put that in there. Um, and this is a really easy interface that I could just add a marker, you know, right over here, and for, I'll just put in blah, blah, blah right now. But now it's part of the, uh, the plan. So this is something that there's not a high learning curve. If for some reason any of us on the commission decide that, you know, we move away or this isn't, you know, um, doesn't fit with our life anymore, the, our, uh, the people that replace us will easily be able to um, use this information as well. So with that, I will you know, ask for any of your guys' comments if this is something that you like, don't like, or you know, any nuances. Wally, I can see your yeah. hand up over there. Yes, first of all, it's a nice project, and I think you did a good job at it. Uh, second of all, the Open Space Committee has a ton of soft paths and they tie with our hard pass. You know, pass or pass on this island, and they probably should tie together. So there is a, a certainly a good incentive for both committees to work together to develop something like this. And I'll take it out of my liaison report. Uh, the Open Space Committee on June 3rd is having their second town hall meeting. And things like this are perfect subjects for it. Uh, if you want to, you or anyone watching or anyone on the commission wants to come down there at 7 o'clock and, and talk about 
how the two systems relate to each other, and, and I think that it's it's incumbent on both of our commissions to make them relate to each other. They all need to be tied together in a, in a non-motorized plan. Uh, so come on down and talk about it at that point also. Mm. What was the date and time of that event again? June 3rd, 7 o'clock p.m. Right here. Just a question. I've been out of this for a while. Has the township gone down the road that we talked long ago about doing GIS uh, uh, implementation for a lot of our public work stuff, and that would be a natural for this? Or has that actually gone anywhere, Bali, or is this no, something I we can do? No, it's gone no place, Roger. Okay. What I can tell you is that should the township decide that it wants to, you know, use GIS that this information can be exported from the Google Map format and be put into GIS. It hasn't so, been yeah. a champion for it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I just, I just want to think if we already had something we can use, but this looks super easy and the price is right. Brian, I have one more question. <clears throat> Do you have any time frames on when um, you think we might have a workable non-motorized plan in place? Um, it's a good question, and... I would like to at least start this process probably later this summer. Um, you know, we could use this as you know, the springboard to like at least getting some ideas on a map, and then perhaps you know a subcommittee can get together and start you know looking at the um, the air, basically developing a skeleton of what we'd like to see within the plan, and you know, hopefully we can have some sort of draft quick and dirty by the end of the year. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if we if we act quickly, maybe we can get it done sooner. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure we do it right. I see. This will also work into the back program too. It's one of the uh, things we don't do that I would like to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, different communities have you know, just like the complete streets ordinances and policies that you were talking about. Different communities have different versions of non-motorized plans. So some are you know, very you know, thick master plan like documents that go into you know, great levels of detail about each individual project. And some communities just have a map and that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. So you know, we can decide on you know, what level of detail we want to get into in this plan. And you know, hopefully, you know, I think it, you know, most of us probably agree that you know, we want to reach out to the other commissions and make this you know, a larger document. That's why I was very happy to hear what you were saying, Wally, about you know, teaming up with open space on this. I think it's important that you team up sooner rather than later. Frankly, they're, they're going to a paper map system, uh, you know, talking about putting out a public mailing to people mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with a path and, and bike path map on it. So uh, it makes good sense to bring us together. And sooner rather than later. Great. Well, if we got the interest and you know the time, you know, I encourage it. Let's do this sooner than later. Okay. Um, can we add picture to that? Um, you know, we might be able to, but I don't know for certain. I'd have to investigate that. Yeah, Wally. No, I just want oh. more question when Jane's done. Um, do I think at the beach? What's that? The beach. The beach? Yeah. Uh, it about should be about a twenty pound. Yeah, right here, Waterfront Park. That's what I call oh, it. Oh, Waterfront Park. Okay. It just it was kind of buried because of the historical society label. Um, you can actually customize the way that you know, if you have okay. you know, your data over here that has more details, but your labels themselves. So you can pick the name or the description, or even you know, no labels. And so now it's a lot easier to see the, the Waterfront Park, and you just click on the actual um, points to see different information. That'd be good to take a picture. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, I passed a note to you earlier about a pure Michigan trail. Have you seen that before? Um, you know, I think I saw parts of this. Um, you know, the governor himself is looking at you know, having Michigan be you know, the trail state. Well, that, that document says to me that they're looking for trails that can meet the criteria to be designated as a pure Michigan trail. It would be nice mm -hmm. to have a Grosiel bike path as being one of the first ones designated. So if you want to read through it and, and share it with the, with the com, uh, commission, I'm going to mm -hmm. down and make some copies of it. Sure, yeah, we, we can do that. Um, uh, at the same time, you know, I was going to have this in my report, but I'll, I think it's fitting to talk about it right now since we're on that subject. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working with uh, some officials that are looking at the Governor's Showcase Trail, which is the concept of you know, a, uh, a trail system 
that has different types of facilities out there. Sometimes it's going to be on road. Sometimes it's going to be hike bike paths. Other times it's going to be you know, rail trails. Uh, there, there's different things in different communities, uh, as well as it's considered to be more of a braided system that in some sections it'll be uh, more just hiking. Um, so there, there might be a path for hikers that's going through you know, more open country on the west side of the state. And then there might be a section for just you know, primarily bicycling on the east side of the state. And eventually they're going to come together. Um, so they're working on the details of all that, trying to figure out the routing. But uh, you know, this is unofficial at this time. But there's an expressed interest in, you know, uh, first of all, taking the trail from Belle Isle down to Monroe, to, you know, so that way there's actual connection to the River Raisin uh, historic battlefield. So while the logical route based on that is coming down Jefferson from the city of Detroit, so you know, the city of Trenton, Wyandotte is going to be hit up by that, but they're also specifically uh, you know, entertaining the concept of having a loop going on Grozeal basically from the free bridge, I mean from the toll bridge, um, and then cutting down to East River and then going down to grow and coming back up and taking the free bridge off. So you're right on the money there, Wally. You know, it's something that we should definitely be advocating more for, and I'm hoping that you know, this is just you know, it's going to be exactly what we're hoping for. Can, can, do you mind if I just read it to this group right now? Not at all. It's Pure Michigan Trails Package Moves Out of House Committee. It's came, this comes from the Michigan Township Association. A package of bills spotlights Michigan trails as a way to promote economic development, tourism, and a healthy lifestyle. The House Tourism Committee reported S uh, SBs 873, 875, and 877, as well as two newly added bills that are also tied by our House Bill 5553 and House Bill 5559. Together, the bills create a pure Michigan trail designation for Michigan trails and water trails. Criteria for designing or designating a trail would be also include that it contributes to a statewide trail network that promotes healthy lifestyles, economic development, recreation, and conservation of the state's resources. A township, city, or village could also be designated as a pure Michigan trail town if it is easily accessible from a trail, adopts a resolution in support of the designation, Adopts, adopts a plan for providing support services to the trail and meets other criteria. The two bills would eliminate trailway user fees and state forest lands as a revenue source for what will be known as the Pure Michigan Trails Fund and give the Department of Natural Resources authority that is currently granted to the Natural Resources Commission. Michigan Township Association supports this package of bills as it promotes regional economic development and tourism while also recognizing communities for their efforts to promote trails. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a water trail. We call it the Thoroughfare Canal. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got bike paths. We've got soft paths. We need to go for this. I agree. It's everyone else's opinion on it. I'll make, a, I'll make a few copies and pass them off. I'll do it right now. Great. Um, while Wally's doing that, um, you know, we're talking about... Can you take that punch list to make a copy too, please? Does everybody want to copy the current punch list? Yes, please. Sure. Um, Wally, I will definitely fill you in on this as we come back. Um, this I probably can hear you. Okay. Um, so as we're moving forward with a non-motorized plan, It'd be helpful to have you know, uh, a glossary or you know, terminologies of different types of bicycle facilities, pedestrian facilities, and different information out there. Uh, the Michigan Department of Transportation has just released their terminology list, and so I've included the link within our agenda documents, and I plan to put the, uh, a link up on our website. But I'd just like to share this with you right now and kind of um, you know, give you a little preview of what this document includes. So uh, if we can make sure that the viewers on, uh, at home can look at this as well. This is the Bicycle and Pedestrian Terminology document published by the Department of Transportation. And it's actually a very you know, comprehensive document that goes through a lot of different bicycle facilities, uh, the terms, as well as you know, other treatments. So, you know, I mentioned before, I, when we were looking at our map and we had little stars, I said activity center 
you know, that's right in here. It's a you know, public or private facility that acts as a trip generator. Um, you know, you know, that's a fancy term for saying that, hey, people are going to be walking or biking to or from this place. Um, so that would be something that we might consider to be you know, put in within our document. You use that type of language um, as we're actually drafting it up. Um, there's information I've talked before about bicycle boulevards, or you know, we talk about bicycle parking, um, way, you know, the bicycle network and wayfinding signage. There's quite a bit of information in here, and I'd encourage all of my fellow commissioners, as well as anybody that has an interest in uh, walking and biking, to take a look at this document. So that way, you know, we're all speaking a common language. Um, within my job, you know, over at SEMCOG, Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, I go out to communities and you know, I talk to them about different types of bicycle facilities. And that's a problem that we actually have is that you know, somebody will say bike path and you know, they're really talking about a bicycle route on the road that doesn't have you know, any uh, you know, separation from the traffic lanes, it's just an actual sign. Or they might be talking about a cycle track, uh, which is you know, a separated bicycle facility. Um, so if, if we are all speaking you know, the, the same common language here, I think it will help us with our planning process. Uh, additionally, you know, you know, we, we talk about uh, not only looking at engineering solutions, but you know, education programs and encouragement activities and safe routes to school is one of those examples. So the, the next two items I wanted to show you fall under you know, potential education programs, uh, things that you know, we could either have as a link on our website or you know, possibly promote through uh, Grozeal TV or other resources. The first one is uh, called Safer Journey, and it's you know, put out through a partnership with uh, the Federal Highway Administration as well as the Bicycle and Pedestrian Information Center, which is in uh, South Carolina. So to give you background on Safer Journey, they came up with CD-ROMs in the past that you know, you know you put the CD in your computer and it was interactive and it could give you videos and quizzes information about you know how do you best you know travel safely when you're walking or biking um, and it it was a good document but you know it still had a little bit of a learning curve to it and so they just released a newer version specifically for bicycling this came out about two weeks ago and I really like the interface. And I'd like to kind of show you a little bit about it. Um, you know, it breaks up you know the education into three different categories. Those you know for youth, so basically you know kindergarten through you know elementary school ages five through nine, as well as ages ten through fourteen, and then fifteen through eighteen. And obviously, fifteen through eighteen would apply to adults as well. Um, so I'm just going to link on here and show you that there's different videos, and I'm going to play a little bit of this one for the children. Not sure if the viewers at home can hear the audio. Hopefully they can. So you can see with this video that it appeals directly to you know, a, a more of a, you know, a chill, childlike audience. Um, I'm more childlike myself, so maybe I would actually watch this whole thing. <laughs> but uh, uh, what's nice is that they've tailored this to the different ages, and they do provide quizzes. So you know, after they watch the video, you, know, you can find out you know, did, did they learn anything as part of watching this video. Sorry. 
So um, there's also different resources for people that are trying to educate um, you know, children about bicycling. Uh, so that, you know, we could actually look at that in more detail and see if there's any other programs that would be uh, applicable. But I view that you know, we could you know, additionally not only have this on our website or on GITV, but hopefully if there, we get a, a more comprehensive Safe Routes to School program going, that this might be part of the curriculum, you know, introducing it to the actual children. Um, just real quick, I want to show you the, uh, the video for ages 10 to 14, just so you can see the differences in uh, the way the information is conveyed. if any of you guys saw this before or you know, what your reactions are to this. Is this something that we um, should promote anymore? Jane, I'd like to get your comments first. Is it caption? What's that? Caption. I know that there's a CC. Oh, I'm there's sorry. There's a transcript. Let's see if it, if it works on Let's there. Let's see if that's a good caption or not. Yeah, the closed captioning is there. I'm so sorry for not putting I'm that up happy, there. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wally, any, did, were you able to uh, view any of the? No, but I can do that. Okay. Bob, any comments? Well, I think it's great. I think the idea of putting it on GI uh, TV would be excellent with the summer coming. It would be a, an opportunity for kids mm -hmm. to see that and parents to see that at home and maybe learn some things they could help mm -hmm. reinforce about some ideas. Maybe an idea to work with Ted. Sometimes, if I want to watch a certain video, what time? So maybe we can coordinate with Ted. We're going to show this at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and post it on the website and post it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Rather than sit out there and watch those meetings. Yeah, we can look into that. Share it on Facebook and it'll play right there. That's true. That too. Aaron, Alan? Um, I think this is definitely something we could use after the bike to school day. I saw a lot of good things and there was a lot of th enthusiasm around it, but. Um, it's apparent that we need some more education too. So this might be a, I guess, a more exciting tool to use. Alan, I think. I think this is great. Um, I think our mindset has to be that with prevention we don't need a cure, and we're going to get prevention through education. So, it's, to me, it's critical that we do this. Excellent. Roger. Yeah, it looks very well done. Spent some money on it. Might as well take advantage of it. Taxpayers <laughs> already paid for it, and it's good content. Great. I would I would make one more suggestion that uh, I know next year when we have our biking to school activity, that maybe we talk to the schools and encourage them to review this with the class, you know, in the classes maybe like a week before or something in preparation. Good idea. Definitely. Um, so maybe have a little um, um, assembly. Mm -hmm. You can bring up bike and you can show they took the wrong way, they took the right way. You can do it in each school. They were not high school, but you can promote it one week before. Yeah. Maybe I can get involved this time. We'd be happy to have you on that. Um, you know, there, are, there are a variety of ways that we can you know, incorporate different education programs into the schools. I've seen quite a few. Um, I'll continue to pass along information that I get to this entire commission and hopefully as um, yeah, I, 
as Aaron was saying, you know, I've heard you know a lot of good things about the Safe Routes to School program, and people have come up to me and said how much that parents have come up and said how much they enjoyed it. And I've been telling them that well, you know, we're always going to be looking for volunteers to help us out because, you know, while Aaron is doing a great job over here, she's only one person, and I want her, you know, to be happy and stay, remain part of this commission over here. So you know, we got to lighten her workload when it comes to safe routes. So. Um, you know, hopefully we can get you know a, a very large crew associated with this event in the future. So do you think we get more motivation to walk to school in the fall, or do you bother the time? Think you got a good reputation. Um, may I add one thing? Sure. We did um, early on in the planning. I was talking to some of the principals about having an assembly, um, and a few of the principals were supportive. But I think uh, once there were so many snow days, and then all of a sudden the class time was uh, much more protected, um, we decided that probably wasn't wasn't in the best interest of the students at that point. Um, but that was something we had talked about. And Safe Routes actually does a great job of sending out packets. And I know that at least the middle school principal had distributed the packets to some of the teachers to incorporate into their pride class. Now, I'm not familiar with what that is. But um, I think there was a little bit um, of education that was, oh, you would know. Yeah, pride class is homeroom. Is homeroom? OK. Did you see any of that material in your homeroom? Yes, I read through the entire thing. I was one of the only few students who read through the <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> At least he's honest. <laughs> um, last, I got another video over here from MDOT. Um, if you guys are interested, I'll play it. But for the sake of you know, timing, if you guys are interested, uh, you know, feel we can view that on our own later on, you know, we'll move on. Um, last item I had under new business was just uh, you know, about uh, the duathlon or other you know, rides. And I've been approached about having BPAC be involved with the duathlon or uh, you know, potentially with other events. And to be honest, you know, I know that we're, we're all pretty busy. So I don't know why it might be nice to have involvement with that. I wasn't sure if that would be something that we should be looking at right now. But again, I don't want to make the decision for this commission, so I wanted to, to hear everybody else's opinion on, is this some, first, is this something that you think is good? Two, do you think we have the time to actually be uh, being a part of events like this at this point? Let's start with Jane. Run. Well, we had it recently, didn't we? Not there was a duathlon last weekend. Um, so obviously we were not a part of that. Uh, apparently, the support crew that was supposed to be a part of the, uh, that event quit on them at the last minute, and so I was approached and asked, you know, can we be a part of this? And I said, I need more details. Uh, didn't get those details, so obviously, you know, I um, I didn't bug you guys anymore about that. But in the future, you know, if this is something that we do have a general interest in, I thought it'd be good to you know, get the get. Um, be more proactive about it so that way we have proper planning and if it's something that we like then we make sure that we have enough time to plan for everything. That would be depending on where all the five W's and then we can make a decision. Okay. Molly, I mean. No, something like a duathlon takes a lot more bodies than this commission has. Uh, I can see larger organizations on the island, uh, Knights of Columbus for one, would, would be a, an appropriate size group so that some folks could could assist in something like this. And in all fairness, they do already. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, I know that they were cooking hot dogs and passing out snacks for stuff like this. And they'll be involved in the run for the unborn this coming weekend. Uh, you know, and three cheers for them. They're a great group. Uh, but for us to tangle with with something of this size, we just don't have enough people. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably might want to do it. Uh, if you want to be personally involved, anybody in this should probably jo join in with one of those groups. You don't have to be a knight to help a bike path mm -hmm. or, or do athlon, I mean. Great. Bob, any comments? Um, well, I agree with Jane and I agree with Wally. I'm kind of, I guess, in the, in the middle of that. I think it's a great opportunity for us if we're aware of them in advance and know what is the expectation. I agree with Wally. We don't have the bandwidth to 
you know, being a sponsor group or whatever, but it would be nice to have presence at some of these events to reinforce safety, education, and opportunity to do things on the island. So um, it'd be nice to be kept in the loop informally or formally from a communications perspective. I don't know as far as activities what we could truly participate because I could see a best case scenario, maybe two of us being able to be available for that event since there's only seven of us to start with. Mm -hmm. So um, I would think that any groups out there that are going to be doing things on the island, if they were to let us know in advance, we may be able to um, help in some small ways, given enough advancement and enough expectation um, within a, a scope of what we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously we couldn't be manning a lot of areas for them, so. Great. Um, based on what you're talking about and what Wally's mentioning, you know, maybe what we could do is be like we are for other things and people can come to us if we have enough time, you know, we can make sure that we populate it within a calendar or a list that we can have on our website. You know, relay that information to the officials that we think might be uh, most appropriate for that. So as an example, like you know, while I was talking about, well, maybe we say this is something that maybe the Knights of Columbus would be interested in. And so we can uh, forward that on. Um, so thank you both for those comments. Um, Aaron, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I'd say I'm... I'm along with Rob, I think that we should uh, be a presence. I, for us to, um, I guess, completely champion it, I worry about the legacy of the event. Um, because I know it would be a huge responsibility and, you know, even if we were able to pull it off one year with um, the turnover on commissions and just the amount of work that's required for it, I, I worry that it wouldn't go much past that. So. Um, Again, I, I think that we should be a presence, but mm -hmm. I don't know that we can champion something like that. Thank you. Maybe. Um, Alan. I agree. I mean, uh, we are involved in a lot of things, and I think the more things we get involved in, the, we're spreading out our time and effort, and we're not going to do them as well. So we have to pick out the projects, so to speak, pick our battles, and uh, try to do them very well. And I'd rather do fewer things better and try to cover every event we potentially could be involved in. I just don't think it's feasible. Um, we have enough work to keep all of us busy if we do this full time. It's very true. But maybe, um, like you said, you don't have enough people. Maybe you should uh, establish a volunteer. Like if anybody's out there interested in volunteering, oh, I'm not part of the commission, but I like to get involved. Well, maybe you can make a volunteer list. Mm -hmm. Like Aaron, you know, like next year, you have a list ready. It's an interested kind of Brian. Yeah, we can look at that. Thank you. Roger. I have nothing more to add other than to agree with the fact that there's a lot of balls in the air and getting more balls in the air is going to probably cause us to drop balls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Awesome>. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. I'm glad that we're in agreement on this. And you know, we'll still do, see what we can do to be a part of it. But... Um, I want to keep you all on here, so I'm not going to give you any more work. Um, with that, I'd like to move on to reports and closing. Um, we can start with ta uh, the Township Liaisons Report. Wally? I think I've given it to you already in bits and pieces. Okay. Great. Um, I have a big laundry list here, and I'm not going to go through the entire thing. I've already talked about the showcase trail. Um, there's a quite a bit of different things going on um, within Downriver. There's been you know, other communities that have been looking at pursuing walkability and bikeability. If you're interested in hearing anything more that's been going on in Woodhaven or uh, Trenton, please let me know. Additionally, there's lots of bike rides coming up, including um, the 2014 uh, Lucinda Means Bicycle Advocacy Day on May 21st, uh, which is tomorrow. Um, and that's a group ride of silence, and it's essentially to meet with legislatures to talk about specifically about bicycle issues and more about you know, safety and sharing the road. Um, that's sponsored by the League of Michigan Bicyclists, so if you guys want more information on that, please go to lmb.org. Um, additionally, there's closing days for uh, SEMCOG's Commuter Challenge, which you know, basically champions the idea of pursuing alternative transportation to relieve congestion, promote more community cohesiveness. Uh, the reason why I let people know about this is because if you participate in any level, um, you're entered into a drawing and there's different prizes. So uh, you can get more information on that. 
at DetroitCommuterChallenge.com. And last but not least, again, if you're interested in you know, more education for drivers, bicyclists, or law enforcement officials, the League of Michigan Bicyclists and many other you know, state and local uh, uh, organizations have created a group called Share My Roads. Uh, it's, the website is actually sharemiroads.org, and it provides a lot of education for drivers, bicyclists, as well as law enforcement. And there's a pledge card as well as a lot of other information to help you, know, you become more of an advocate and reach out via social media or uh, newspapers you know, to talk about the, the issues of bicycling safety. With that, you know, that's the conclusion of my report. If any other commissioners have anything else they'd like to add, we can do it right now. Uh, we'll start over with Jane. Is there anything that you'd like to add? What's that? Coming at the Allen Pass. Wally? Nothing to add today. Rob? No, I'd just like to uh, thank Jane for all the hard work she's put together, some uh, some nice things for us and for the uh, folks when they come to Island Fest to see at our booth. So, Yeah, right. and I'm going to stop by one day and show you final approval and then look going on about the parking on the brochure, yeah, Alan. Yeah, I've, I've got no update from the church yet. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to wait till the last minute before I give to Kara to print. Aaron. Nothing for me. Alan? Nothing for me. Roger? Nope, nothing for me. Great. With that, um, I'd entertain a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting. I'll, uh, I'll second that. Or I'll both. Okay. <laughs> Can I get support? <laughs> support. Great. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Walk, bike, and drive safe.